Hey, what's up, indie music lovers and indie music makers? Welcome back to another edition of the Indie Tip of the Week. My name is Chris Clay. I am the ambassador for indie artists and indie music, and we're back with another indie tip. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the top, man, they won't play games. Okay, let's play. You know, and what I mean by that is that today's topic, let me tell you before we even get started, today's topic is we thought that because we get so many comments and tweets and stuff like that, that uh, we would go into the mailbag. So before we even get into that piece, let me say this. If you want to join in the conversation, if you got something to say, use the hashtag Indie Tip of the Week. Hashtag Indie Tip of the Week, and you can join in the conversation. And who knows, we may be pulling up one of your questions and asking. Now, what I was talking about in the beginning is that they want to play games with me. You know, they want to test me, see how much I know, because normally I will research before I get started. But today, they want to fire them off to me. I'm in the blind. So send one on over here, man. Y'all want to play games? Let's play games. So, what's the first question? Oh, I got it already. Let me check. Uh, what's the easiest way to get my music out to radio stations for airplay consideration? This comes from Myra in Minnesota. Well, Myra, let me tell you this. The easiest way to get your music out to radio stations. Now, I'm assuming that you're talking about, I'll give you both, but I'm assuming you're talking about commercial radio. To get your record out to commercial radio, there are several music services that you can use to get your music out. You can go to the businessofmusic101.com. This website right here, you can go to this website and get that information. It's businessofmusic101.com. We have a ton of resources there, and we have a music delivery service. That service normally runs anywhere from $75 to about $300. And now that I'm thinking about it, you can use the same service for both internet radio and commercial radio. So that would be the answer to that question and how to get your music out to radio. Thank you, Myra, for even participating in our Indie Tip of the Week. Come on, baby. Shoot. Keep it coming. Oh. Chris, what do you think about internet radio versus commercial radio for breaking my music? Tom from London. Hey, Tom, thank you so much for your, your question. What do I think about commercial radio versus, versus um, terrestrial radio? Um, I think that commercial radio is great. If you can afford it, we we always talk about things that you can, if you can afford it or not. And so, commercial radio is super super expensive. Um, it's a great tool. Don't get me wrong. If you can afford to do a regional record or uh, or do a record in tri-state area or something like that, if your budget allows that, go for it. But the easiest way, I think, and the most effective way because you can see if your record really works is internet radio without breaking the bank. You can see if your record really works without breaking the bank. And I would say it's internet radio. Uh, internet radio can cost you anywhere from about $1,000 to about $25 to $3,000. And I think that there's enough people that are streaming music these days because people are getting their content on their phones. People are getting their content from many different places So besides their local radio station. So I think that you get the opportunity to... Um, really expose your music to a much broader base of people around the world when you use streaming services such as internet radio, podcasters, and things like that. So I'm going to go with the cheapest way and the most effective way when you're just starting out. I'm going to say internet radio. Now, if you have a budget and you're really ready to go hard and you have a team of people that's going to follow up on the record and make those phone calls for you, I would definitely say go with commercial radio. Commercial radio is still there. It still works. I'm a product of commercial radio. I believe in it with all my heart. So if you got the money and you have the budget to do it, please do commercial radio. It'll definitely get you a lot of exposure in your hometown, get you a lot of exposure with different events that go around your hometown. So if you could afford it, please do it. Shoot me. What you got? Oh, this is another one. No. Oh. Y'all really, y'all trying me today, right? Okay. I got it. Here's another question. 
I noticed from my research online that you're all over the place, Mr. Clay. You have a radio show, you're a studio owner, and a podcast. Why, why do you feel it necessary to do these videos? I love smart-ass people that ask smart-ass questions, but I can be a smart-ass too, so if you give it, you can take it. But I'm not going to answer this in a smart way. I'm going to say, sir, um, the reason I choose to do this is because, um, because I come from radio. Because I'm a part of a radio show, because I see records every single day. I see artists, I see records, I make records in the side of my own studio and other studios. I notice that people get to the, after they leave the studio, they're clueless. And I figure this is my way, this business has been so damn good to me. And let me say that again. This business has been so damn good to me that this is my service. This is, I'm not getting paid for this. They charge me every week to come in here and do these videos. I'm not getting paid for this. This is my service to give back because I believe in independent music. I believe in uh, indie artists. I've heard some great records that if they had direction, if they knew what to do, I believe that they could be superstars. And so when you get tired of seeing great music it go to waste, either you're going to do something about it or you're going to be part of the problem. I chose to be part of the solution. So this is my give back. And that's why I do it. Thank you for doing the research on me, though, man. I appreciate that. Google is fantastic, ain't it? You know, you can go and look around and see what somebody do, see how much they make. I'm glad they don't print my salary online. I pay a lot of money to keep that off. But, um, you know, that's why I do it, man. And it's not about making a dollar because the question kind of comes like you're asking me, you're asking as if I'm trying to get something out of it. And sir, I'm not trying to get anything. Now, let me preference that by saying I have a consultancy business. So if someone comes to me and they need a consultant, then I can consult and work should be should get a paycheck, right? So I don't have a problem charging you if I'm doing the work. But this information I'm giving, the information I'm putting out here, these videos are free. They don't cost anybody anything. And um, that's the reason why I do it. So without going into more detail, because then I'm going to get funky with it. Um, that's why I do it. It's my give back because I see a lot of records that end up on the floor that were great records that had potential to be something. And so now I'm trying to educate and help these people take these records off the floor and turn them into dollars. That's why I do it. Shoot, keep it coming. Uh, Chris, you hear and see a lot of artists in your day to day. What do you think, uh, who do you think has the goods to go the distance and why over the next 24 months? Joey from Alabama. Thank you, Joey. You know, that's, wow, I should have think about that one for a minute. But there are people right off the top of my head that in the next 24 months, if they continue on their grind, if they continue to do the things that they're doing, and before I say this list, please don't be mad at me if I don't say your name because it doesn't mean that you're not doing it right. They're throwing me these questions uh, right off the top. What it means is that you probably haven't penetrated my mind to the point to where I'm thinking about it all the time, but it doesn't mean you don't have great records, okay? The first person that I think in the next 24 months, that's two years, next 24 months, I think there's a young lady from Portland. Her name is Amber Sweeney. Oh, my God. Dope. Dope. Big vocals. You know, she she's still trying to find her identity. So... You know, we don't know exactly where she's going, but she's got a, a soulful record called Restless right now. Really, really dope. I think that if she keeps going the route that she's going, I think that uh, she will definitely be a player in 24 months. Uh, let's see. Um, there's a gospel artist. She was the indie spotlight artist of the week last week. Her name's Leslie Beaver. Leslie Beaver, uh, with a, well, I guess with a name like Beaver, you got to be great, right? I'm just playing, Leslie. Don't take it serious. Anyway, Leslie Beaver, she's a gospel artist. Um, she is the, she's next, man. She's definitely next. And I think she's going to be big in the Christian contemporary world. Uh, she's not trying to do anything else. So, but she has a very soulful voice. So I think you'll dig her if you check her out. She has a track out right now called In the Waiting. 
the record is just so dope. You can Google it, see the video. She's dope, man, and she's got all the goods. What I mean, all the goods, she's got the money, she's got the look, she's got the sound, she has the work ethic. So I think that Leslie Beaver, definitely, and she's from Charlotte, North Carolina, I think that she's definitely going to be in that running. Um, let's see. Um, this kid out of L.A., Kenyon Dixon, he has, he's from L.A., he has a record uh, called Body's Calling. And um, the reason why I say it's a blessing and a curse, it's a blessing that the record's happening organically. It's a curse because they don't call and check up on their work. So it kind of says that they're not serious about their grind and their hustle. It's going to bite them in the butt in the long run because he's got a lot of radio stations playing the record. And because he doesn't give that feedback or give the radio station a chance to give them that feedback when he comes with another single, I think he's going to pay the price. But they can clean that up really quick. And that's the only reason I'm putting it out here on blast is that Kenya, clean up your act, man. Call these radio stations, bro. You got dope album, bro. And you got several singles in there. You don't want radio to get, get a snippy with you and not play your records, man. That's one, another person. Let's see, I'm going to give you about three more. Um, there's this young lady from the UK. Her name is Sinead Harnett or Sinead, Sinead, Sinead Harnett. Uh, she has a ton of records, man. She's killing it with, I mean, just organically here in the States. They do zero promotions in the States. She's killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it. I think in the next 24 months, some big label in the U.S. is going to sign her and she's going to be a household name in 24 months. Uh, there's a young lady out of Miami, Florida. Her name is Sabrina Claudio. Another one that just has the luck of the Irish. Her records just kind of happen organically. Um, you know, they do a lot of videos. They put records out. She's building her fan base organically. They don't do any radio promotion or anything. She just has that trap soul kind of vibe going on with her records. Check her out. Google her. Her name is Sabrina Claudio. She's from Miami, Florida. Young chick. She's got it going on. I think in 24 months, she's definitely going to be a, a player to deal with. And uh, let's see here. Uh, um, I'ma say there's a chick in Philly. I just found out about her a week ago. Her name is Joanne Pascali. She's a jazz singer. Dope, dope. She redid like the Wildflower track. Super dope, man. I think, I've never heard any more of her record, so I really can't comment. I'm just going by the reaction of that one record. Uh, you know, we uh, got it serviced to us, and then I talked to the guys in the IBA. They're loving it. They're feeling her. I think she's going to definitely have be a player, man, now that she's getting some radio play. Over 24 months, I think if she does her homework and she gets busy, I know I noticed that she travels a lot out of the country, but I think if she get busy in the States, she could really be a real player around, you know, the United States as well as abroad. Um, I can't forget about uh, Will Wheaton and Bridget Bryant. Will Wheaton and Bridget Bryant, they are a duo. They both are individual artists, but they came together for a project. Uh, they're doing it all the right way. You know, they're spending money. They have great records. They interact with radio. They do interviews. They're all over the place, man. Every time I look on social media, they're doing something. So I think in 24 months, yeah, because now Sirius is playing the record and they're getting some other radio stations around the country. I think they're going to be real players in 24 months. They're already real players in their own right, you know, because Will is a songwriter. He's wrote songs for Will Downing and many others. Bridget just came back from tour again with Phil Collins. She's a background singer for Phil Collins and uh, she has her own project. They're already, you know, killing it in their own right, but together, I think they're going to be a force to uh, reckon with. And uh, last but not least, there's a young man in Australia. He's a producer. Um, he's had um, a top five record, which is his current single. His name's Jazzy D. Uh, he has a, a top five record uh, with his current record, which is Every Side of You. And uh, he had a number one record uh, with um, the record called Wonder. And the reason why I say him, I'm just looking at it from a production standpoint. The kid has an incredible ear. Now, he has a unique brand. And what I mean by that is that 
here's a guy that makes music in Australia and then he travels on the internet. He doesn't go anywhere. He tr lets his fingers do the typing and the traveling and he finds all these vocalists, male and female vocalists around the country, uh, around the world. Let's just not say country, around the world. He finds these people and he gets them to feature on his records. And you know, he just has an ear for what he wants. The records are properly tuned to the singers. I love the brother. I've talked to him several times. He has a big vision, he has a big personality, uh, but he's quiet. You know, when I say quiet, it's like he's not braggadocious. Sometimes he's doubting himself. I think this boy gonna be something, man. I think he's gonna really, in the next 24 months, if he keep it up, he's gonna make a lot of money. And uh, I think that all these artists that he's doing deals with, I think they're gonna make him a lot of money. So, that's what, six, seven artists that I think right off the top of my head that's definitely going to be doing something nice in the next 24 months. So keep your eye on them and make sure you Google all these people so you could see what I see. And I would love to hear what you think as well. Come on, baby. Give it to me. Where we at? Uh, man, y'all fast over there, man. Y'all must think I'm no secretary, man. You know, I can't ain't got no teleprompter. What's the biggest mistake you see indie artists make that stops their growth? Louie from Texas. Well, Louie, thank you for your question. Biggest mistake that I see that artists make, indie artists make, is that uh, I, I got 400 of those mistakes in my head. But I'm going to pull off the, the ones that I see the most. Work ethic. Um, I believe... And I'm about to piss off a bunch of indie artists right now. But I don't care because it's the truth. And maybe it'll make you get up off your ass and do something. Um, work ethic. I think that they have brilliant work ethic in the studio. Once the studio is over, just looking, just looking as a bystander. Kind of prima donna-ish, you know, kind of, you know, entitled. Kind of like, I don't have to do no more work. I've done my work already. That's the biggest mistake that I see where, you know, once they make the record, the second biggest mistake that I see is that, and let me finish that thought process. They make the record and then there's nothing. They want everybody else to do the work. Well, it's your brand. You need to be building your own brand. So, you know, you should work. The people that you hire to work for you are only, are people that's your friends that's helping you out. They're only going to work as hard as you. So if you don't work, they don't work. And guess what? When there's no work, the record falls on the floor. The second biggest mistake that I see, and again, no disrespect to my brothers in the UK. And I'm going I'm to I'm really hit on this for a minute. Um, I feel that everybody has this, everybody want to be a worldwide superstar. Okay, so everybody want to take the shortcut. And in taking that shortcut, as soon as they see their record pop up on the UK soul chart or on some other chart in the UK, they feel like they've made it. And I'm saying, look, man, at the end of the day, UK radio is great. I love, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of those brothers. I think that they do great work. I think their radio stations has presenters, they're great DJs, they do their thing. But you got to realize that the UK turn records over really, really fast. And uh, yeah, you might get the opportunity for them to bring you over and do a show. But what happens when you come back? Because if you're not hustling while you're over there, if you're not trying to set up other shows, visiting uh, record radio stations and record stores and promoting while you're there, when you come back, man, you're dead in the water. Because by the time that you touch U.S. soil again, your record's coming down the chart. And once it come down, my friend, you stuck like Chuck. So I don't want to disrespect the UK, but I also want to be able to say, I think you should get your record played at home. You know, the UK, they love great music and they break a lot of music in the UK, but they run records up the chart really fast and they bring them back down really fast. And once they come down, they don't believe in that recurrent thing. So at the end of the day, your record's done and you have no way of tracking it 
once it comes off the chart. So you can look at the chart online, but what happens when it comes off the chart and you can't see it anymore? What happens then? So I think that that's a big mistake and a bit, a big myth that some people have that if I get my record <clears throat> played <clears throat> on the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if I get my record played on the UK station, then I've made it. And that's a huge misconception. That's a huge mistake. But, you know, I think sometimes people have to learn the hard way. The third mistake is that, uh, and, and this will be my last mistake that I see indie artists make. Um, either A, they haven't put a budget together, or B, they haven't put a budget together, and they are afraid to deal with an investor because they feel like I'm, I'm going to have to give up part of my record, which is true. You're going to have to give up some revenue. If somebody invests in you, you're going to give it up. You know, you have no choice. They got to get their money back and they want to profit on their money. Um, secondly, is that, um, you know, they're scared to ask for it, man. So you see great records that, you know, they struggle because of finances. I would definitely say that if you're out here and you're an indie artist and you have no money and you're looking to get on and make things happen, why not get with an investor? Okay, let's just say the investor wants half of the record. That's a bit much based on what they're putting up. If they're only putting up a little bit of money, half is not in the equation. But if they're putting up 10000 50000 100000 half is part of the deal. I'd rather have half of something than 100% of nothing. And there's never going to be 100%. So scratch that mark. There's never going to be 100%. You'll never own 100% of the record. Why do I say that? Is that for everything you do, you got to pay for it. If you hire a promotion person, you got to pay for it. So you're spending money. So at the end of the day, you know, most of the time you can't even recoup that money. In most cases, because you're not well budgeted, you're overspending and you're over projecting the record and you can't recoup those dollars. So I think that why not get with somebody that will help you? They'll give you 50 percent of the record, but they're putting up a large percentage of the money. They're going to hire the people to help you move your brand forward. At the end of the day, you'll come back with fifty thousand dollars and some tour money versus 100 percent of nothing because you were too stubborn or selfish or whatever words you want to put on it, don't matter to me. Well, whatever you were, you was, I call it silly. It was too silly to uh, really let somebody else get involved in, and help you really move your brand forward. There's never been one man, and I live by this every single day of my life. There's never been one man that has built an empire by himself. Never. Show it to me. If you know one, show it to me. You know, you take Steve Jobs. Yeah, he was a front guy, but there's 37 people behind him that was making Apple happen. So there's never one person to make an empire happen. So why not get in bed with some people that really believe in your brand that can help you get to the next level? And I probably will get cussed out for saying this, but while we on it, let me say it. Um, your first record... Most of the time, it's a sacrificial lamb anyway. If you don't know what that means, research it. I don't have time because they're telling me I got to hurry up. I got the next one. Oh, okay, I'm ready. Um, let's see. How do you feel streaming has changed the game? I.e. Spotify, Tidal, and Apple Music. Lynn from Kentucky. Lynn, short version. Um, it has changed the game because you now need several streams to make 99 cents. You need 1,500 streams to get 99 cents. That's hard, man. That's hard, hard, hard on Spotify. That's hard to get people first to follow you. Secondly, to get people to stream your record every day where you're getting 1,500 spins. And then you could do the math 1,500 times 10 will give you 150,000, 150,000 give you 999. That's hard, man. So I think that streaming is good. But I also think that streaming, the good part of streaming is that, you know, people don't have to buy your record. They can stream it and build playlists on their phones and listen to it. Secondly, is that it's a great promotional tool because if they truly become fans of yours and they like your music, then definitely they'll buy your concert tickets. They'll come out and see you. 
I just really think that streaming is good. It's the evolution of the music business. Bad if you don't have real followers and real fans, because now it forces you to get out here and sell them records hand to hand. And that could be kind of hard if you're not performing. Next question, please. Oh, man, y'all fast over there. I can't play with y'all. Let's see here. Um, oh, wow. Y'all sent me two. Uh, I have a single, Mr. Clay, that's hot. And I've been trying to get it on my local radio station, and they won't give me the time of day. Can you offer any advice to help my situation? Troy from New York. Hmm. Um, Troy, let me say this. Um, I know you're going to think I'm a jerk. How do you know your record's hot? You know, have you really tested it? Have you done a listening party? Have you uh, played it for a ton of radio stations and they all said it was hot? Uh, how do you know it's hot? Secondly, is that uh, have you tried your record in other outlets like podcasts, clubs? Um, have you serviced it to ra internet radio stations and let them hear it? You know, we as artists, these records are our babies. You know, when you create them, it's my baby. I've learned to grow tough skin. I really expect people to slam my record up against the wall. So I work hard on it, but I kind of expect people to be haters. Uh, I'm going to still follow my vibe, but I'm never going to call my own record hot. I, I'll say I like it, but I'm not going to call it hot. And the only way that I would, what I consider a hot record, maybe you can adapt this way of thinking. What I consider a hot record is a record that people are hitting the buy now button. That's a hot record because people are taking their hard-earned money and they're going to buy that record. That's a hot record. It may not be a number one record, but it's a hot record to those people that's buying it. So that's a hot record to me. The only advice that I can give you, Troy, is that I would say service your record to internet radio stations. See what kind of vibe they're getting from the record. See what kind of uh, promotions they can offer you to help. See if your record's really a record, you know? And if you don't want to spend any money, go to your local clubs. Try and get the record played. You know, club DJs tell you the truth. Um, they will definitely tell you the truth because they depend on people on that dance floor. And if your record won't move people on dance floor... You know, maybe you don't have a hot record or maybe you don't have a club record. I don't know. I, it's kind of hard to answer that question without knowing what the record is. So I don't know if it's a hip hop record or R&B record or jazz record. I don't know. But I would say try your record in other outlets before you go to your local radio station. And let me clear up this rumor that a lot of people think. A lot of people believe that radio is built to play records. That is not true. I'm a 30-year radio guy. Radio was not built to play records. Radio was built to play commercials. The music was just to bait you in so that you can hear that McDonald's and that Coca-Cola commercial. It's not built to play records, hon. So if that's what you think, I hear a lot of people say, well, man, my local radio station won't play my record, man. They supposed to. No, they not. That's not what it's built for. So don't walk around sound like an idiot. Radio is not built to play records. It's a luxury. And they really need, they play those hot records so you'll listen longer. And when you listen longer, they can sell you more advertisement. Okay? That's what radio is built for. And our final question Hey, Chris, I respect what you're doing to help out indie artists. Tell me why everything in the music business costs so much. Tracy from Louisiana. Tracy, let me tell you, baby, if I could answer that question, man, I would be like the million dollar man. Um, the music business is built on money, you know, and so, um, you know, I think that radio stations from the beginning of the time, they knew if they play your record, you'll sell records, they'll make money. You know, if you hire a PR person or you hire a music service, delivery service, or you hire a promotion person, everybody has a job to do. And, you know, over the years, we've seen those prices continue to go up and up and up. So I don't know why. I just think that inflation, I think that some people are greedy. Uh, so some of the prices you may be getting, I would definitely price shop before I make a commitment uh, because there may be some other people that can do the same job for less. Um, but a good promotion person is going to cost you because he's putting his reputation on the line. He's working for you every day. A good PR person is going to cost you. A good social media person is going to cost you. A good uh, manager 
is going to cost you. A good campaign on radio, internet is going to cost you. That's just the name of the game. It's the music business. The music part was fun. The business is where we get challenged sometimes. But I just say keep grinding on it, baby. Take it slow. I don't know why it's so expensive. It's just business, you know. And uh, <clears throat> no one ever said that you had to make a record. Records are luxuries. You know, we don't have to make records. If you look in the Bible, I done read all 66 chapters. I ain't never seen nothing about God said make a record and your life would be longer. So we don't have to make a record. Records are luxuries. And if we choose to really get into that luxury, then, um, you know, we got to pay to play, baby. That's the name of the game. You know, you could choose not to and not spend that money. You know, that's, that's basically, it's really a weird answer. You're probably over there saying, guy's an asshole. That's the truth, man. You know, I mean, I don't know why people be mad at me because I tell them the truth and I don't try and put spins on it. I just believe in giving you straight whiskey, straight gas, man, so that you know the truth. Can't nobody fool you. And that's another reason why I do these videos. So people can't fool you. I talk to my lawyer. I talk to record companies, record execs. I talk to other lawyers. Uh, uh, because when I get ready to do these videos, I want to make sure I'm giving you the most accurate information. Plus, I go to a lot of seminars for music stuff. So I bring that information back. I'm constantly educating and evolving myself. So I just want you to grow with me. Come on, man. You know, it's kind of lonely over here. I need some more people with me. Come on, hang out. And I'm not making millions of dollars, but I'm having fun and I have a consistent income when it comes to records. So I think that um, I can um, definitely be an authority at this level. Anyway, people, thank you so much for your comments. Thank you for your questions. We appreciate you. I'm not trying to be a jerk, man. I'm really just having fun with you, trying to make this less boring, if you will. Hopefully you get some information out of it. If you got a question, hit us up on the hashtag. It's hashtag in the, the indie tip of the week. Hashtag the indie tip of the week on Twitter. Hit us up, man. Who knows? The next time we stick our hand in the mailbag, it may be a question that you're asking. But right now, you know what time it is. It is time for the indie spotlight artist of the week. Our Indie Spotlight Artist of the Week is Joanna Pascal. Joanna is a native of Philadelphia where she attended high school for the Creative and Performing Arts. She graduated and went on to Temple University where now she's on the faculty and has been a part of the university's two CD releases. We became aware of Joanna with the release of her single Wildflower, which by the way is also the title track of her latest compact disc. Joanna's Wildflower single debuted itself on the Indie Soul chart at number 18, earning over 1,800 spins in just one week. This is why we chose Joanna to be the Indie Spotlight Artist of the Week. Bore the weight of all her fears And a sorrow no one hears Still rings in midnight silence And her ears Let her cry For she's a lady Did you like that? Wasn't that dope? Hey man, get out and hit the buy now button. We got to learn to support these indie artists, people. They're doing it with their own money. They don't have big budgets and they depend on people like you and I, music lovers, to get out and hit that buy now button. So get on out and support it. People, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for visiting our website, thebusinessofmusic101.com. If you need to get in touch with me, you can find all of my information there. I love to talk to you. I love to have have fun with you but remember i'm direct you know i'm not trying to be a jerk i'm just being direct man my time is precious and if you are going to get me on the phone then man let's go for it let's have some fun but at the same time let's take care of some business okay i'm pretty direct i don't spin on you i don't cut the corner i'm coming straight at you man because i want you to be successful in the quickest way possible and i don't have time to bs you because i don't want you to bs me Okay, until the next time that we get the opportunity to fellowship together, I love you. Keep making that music, man, and keep that music playing real loud. Her. 
she will awaken. awaken. Sleep's the only freedom that she knows. When you walk into her eyes, you won't believe the way she's always paying for a debt she never owes. Still blows that only she can hear. So she goes.